Today on Here for the Right Reasons, Blake Hortzman talks about the upcoming Bachelor in Paradise switch up. The coolest things about Paradise is the relationships that come out of it. And if you continue to throw these insane curveballs and make it so much harder, I think the audience is going to be like, what the hell? Like, I, I can watch Real Housewives if I want to watch drama and chaos. Like, I want to watch these shows, you know, for love. So. And Nick Vile reveals why he thinks real love is impossible in the Bachelor bubble. You know, to me, love is about that trust and that understanding where you are and not constantly worrying about how someone feels about you. And the whole show, the whole premise of The Bachelor is to, like, be kept in the dark yeah. uh, about how someone feels about you to the very end. And that that is not building trust. Plus, Claire Crawley is engaged. New Bachelor Zach reveals where Avon stands with Rachel. Clayton reveals if he's ready to date. And we break down all the highs and lows from Bachelor in Paradise. We've got that plus so much more on today's Here for the Right Reasons. Hey guys, Christina Garvaldi here with Us Weekly, Deputy Editor Sarah Heron. And Sarah, I feel like we've lived a whole year in Bachelor in Paradise already. I mean, Paradise, we've had one rose ceremony. One. We're at the end of five episodes with no ro- with one rose ceremony. That's insane. It's insane. And I looked at the schedule and it's on until Thanksgiving. So buckle up, people. We were so misled. I was, I don't know if ABC just released the schedule for just October and people were like, oh, great. It's just this month. Or if they added new episodes, it's kind of confusing. Some people said they add new episodes. I think they added them a while ago and just didn't announce the November. I don't think that the reviews are having them be like, let's find that footage from the cutting room floor. So I think it's crazy that they planned for this to always be 16 episodes it's insane I like I didn't we'll talk more about it but I didn't need like a full hour of Ashley and Jared but don't even get me started I oh. and you will soon but my yeah. <laughs> all right let's see what you guys had to say about last week's show all right who is this EEG EEG <laughs> EEG on YouTube ominous said the Shanae Genevieve double date with Aaron and James was so set up glad Teddy just left she wasn't going to put up with all the shenanigans by the producers oh and the Sally Suki's vibrator story was also a joke fair agree <laughs> all facts <laughs> all facts and another fact by Winsome Kalem says Ashley and Jared's storyline didn't need it Ima- imagine how they feel now <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, a week later with um, four more hours of that. Didn't need it. No. Um, all right, well, let's get into our news of the week and some happy news from Claire Crawley. Our former bachelorette is off the market. She is engaged to boyfriend Ryan Dawkins. The two got engaged in Las Vegas and it comes just a few weeks after she revealed that the two had been dating for a year. So really happy for Claire. Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of confusing for some people because they went public last month, um, but now they're engaged. So less than a month after the Instagram official, she is now engaged. He is, I feel like, I think he's 45. Yeah. She's 41. I think he has kids. Um, so clearly down a different place. And they were friends first. I went back. They met the same month that Dale and Claire broke up, which was last September, but they started out as friends. And I think he actually supported her through a lot of that turmoil. You know, her mom has been sick and that's how they came together. So fingers crossed the third time is the char for, charm for our girl. I really, I, I hope it works out for her and her first fiance, Ben Benoit, and some congrats to them as well. So seems like she's still got a lot of bachelor nation support. So good for her. Yeah, there was a lot of comments. And like Jennifer yeah. Hewitt, question mark. Like there were some like A-listers also in her um, comments. So good for Claire, honestly. Like this is all she's ever wanted. Yeah. So I really, really hope that this is the real deal. And I they too. have kept it mostly offline. So maybe that means it is. I hope so. Fingers crossed. Well, someone who, you know, maybe should keep things offline for a bit. Clayton Eckerd opened up about his dating life after his split from Susie and the former bachelor isn't quite ready to find love again. He told E! News, I'm not looking to date right now. I'm not mentally healed. I can't even fathom seeing anybody in that light right now. And so I think I'm really just taking this time to focus on myself. If I'm not healed, then I can't allow anybody else to be part of me. I I agree. I think he should take some time to just kind of chill out, um, figure out what he needs, figure out what he wants. I I mean, obviously the show took a really big toll on his mental health and that was one of the big reasons why he and um, Susie split. So it seems like he just needs to work on, work on Clayton for a little while. I agree completely. Keep working on Clayton and maybe, you know, E! News doesn't need to know. Unless you want to tell me, Clayton, maybe we don't, we just work on ourselves privately. But if you're, if you're listening, I would love to talk to you. <laughs> totally. Give me a call though. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Well, our new bachelor, Zach, may not have found love with Rachel, but he did give an update on her latest potential romance. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been talking about if she's continuing to talk to Avon after the final rose, but Zach told E! News, E! News again. Last I saw her and Avon, 
Avon had a little bit of a spark on camera. I love and respect Avon. So I want the best for them if that's a thing, but I also just want the best for her. Um, he said that he really hasn't uh, talked too much to Rachel, but they did have some closure after the final rose. And he said that they really haven't talked um, so much since then. But um, I, I don't think that anything is going on with Avon and Rachel. I don't either. I mean, I think we obviously with the Hannah Brown and the Tyler Cameron of it all, which this wanted to recreate, we got that staged yeah. paparazzi photo quite quickly, mm -hmm. um, which kind of made me think the show was involved. Who knew they would be at that apartment? Yada, yada. But um, that there was proof that they did spend some time together. These two, I think we've seen Rachel at Dancing with the Stars with Gabby several times. She was in Florida with her parents for a period of time during the hurricane. Um, and I don't know what Aiden's up to, but I think that maybe they're having secret you know, rendezvous via text. That would be fun to find out later, a fun reveal. But um, it's hard for people in The Bachelor not to kind of let us know what's going on. So that makes me think also that I doubt anything's happening. But I kind of secretly hope they're like forming this epic relationship. And like the glory days of Ashley and Jared drop some video where they're like, by the way, it's official. And then they fill us in later. That'd be fun, but I doubt it. I doubt it too, but that would be fun. Sorry. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about Paradise. Mm -hmm. Um... And before we get into specifics about this week's episode, Teddy, who we saw leave last week, seemingly reflected on the nature of her departure. This was so cryptic. She revealed why she was proud of herself. Yeah. <laughs> and this was on Instagram. And she wrote, one, for leaving environments that are cruel to me and the people around me. Two, sticking to my boundaries, no matter how many times people in authority try to cross them. Mm -hmm. um, excited for this next chapter and what the rest of the year will bring. Yikes cruel environments and the people around me and yeah. ooh, I, just, I don't know I mean listen it's not the first time the bachelor has been accused of maybe not being the healthiest place to be but with Teddy specifically as we said last week like that scene with her and the producers I thought it was weird they included because there are a lot of rumors that like they had this preconceived notion of she needed to be with Andrew and then when she wasn't feeling it she was kind of scared what was going to happen if she did explore Rodney so then she left and I definitely think it was the right move for her but it's very like when people drop little breadcrumbs like this, I'm always just like, what aren't they saying? God, I would love to know what the people aren't saying about the behind the scenes of The Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, because yes, yeah, like these little crumbs that are dropped every now and then. Oh God, if somebody could just write a book, you know, 10, 15 years from now, I can't wait to read it. Oh, me either. Hopefully we'll be here, Christina. Somehow. Hopefully. Hopefully. You're not the revelation. Hopefully. Um, well, a person that might actually write that book maybe is Blake Kortzman. And I know that you spoke to him uh, this week, right? About the switch up and oh. why he doesn't watch the show. Yes, I did catch up with Blake. I caught up with the Blakes um, in case I have anyone keep an eye out for some Blake Moines content coming your way as well. Um, I caught up with Blake Hortzman and I asked him why he's not watching the show anymore and what he thinks of this upcoming Bachelor twist, which we did finally see tease at the end of Tuesday's episode of Paradise. Here's what he had to say. Something you're not tuning into, Blake H, is The Bachelor anymore. At least that's what you said at one point. Is that still where you stand? <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't. You know, obviously it's like kind of like Blake just kind of mentioned. It's like, it's very hard to escape everything. You know, you follow certain pages, you follow whatever it is, you follow your friends who they post about it. So it's hard to escape. But yeah, I have not watched, I didn't watch any of Gabby and Rachel season and I haven't watched uh, any of this paradise. But obviously, like, I know the things that happened. You know, it's hard to escape as much as I want to. Um, it's not easy. But it's been, it's been, it's been a relief. Um, it's kind of, you know, for me, and I think for most people, Bachelor's can be a bit toxic at times. Um, and just kind of like, Amazing. that toxicity out of out of my life has been a blessing and um it's 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 been it's been great for me i'm not saying it's great for everybody but it's been great for me um but i still am rooting for a lot of my friends who are in the in you know bachelor nation who are in uh who are actually going to be on this season of paradise we're on it currently so i'm rooting for them and um i wish everybody you know happy ending that they're looking for because you have been on paradise blake h they're doing this thing this year where they're splitting up the couples at one point to bring in the newbies like love island style and um, I feel like the right, you know, it's as a viewer, exciting as a person on the show, probably not so much. Do you have any thoughts on that whole, that whole concept? And just, did I explain it correctly? <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, so from also, I've heard like rumors about it's kind of, it? it's like an actual name for it, right? It's, um, the Casa, Casa Amor is what they call it on Love Island. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what they call it. So I heard they're literally, they're just like copying everybody from Love Island. They were like, but I think my, you're right. As a viewer, I'm like, hell yeah. Chaos drama like this is gonna be amazing but i think as like a contestant i think it's frustrating because we just had one of the most successful paradise seasons ever right we had maybe like four or five relations come out of this and the show is always just so much like we're here for the right reasons and we're here to find people love well then why all of a sudden completely change the entire you know the entire whatever you want like um, format 
yes yeah. format and to bring in more drama and create more you know like like chaos instead of really trying to find these people a, a match and a partner so i think from that sense as a contestant i think i'd be very frustrated um but as a viewer hell yeah like, i guess like um, you know it's gonna make for good tv but it's just i think people are gonna want to also like one of the coolest things about Paradise is the relationships that come out of it. And if you continue to throw these insane curveballs and make it so much harder, I think the audience is going to be like, what the hell? Like, I can watch Real Housewives if I want to watch drama and chaos. Like, I want to watch these shows, you know, for love. So, But we'll see. We'll see how the, the audience responds. All right. I'm ready for the switch up. I think that that could save the season. I think so too, definitely. Um, I, know, I know you, a big week of Bachelor um, interviews. You also spoke with Nick, um, a really wide ranging interview, but I, I found this part really interesting. I did. I spoke with Nick and kind of this concept of like real love in Bachelor Nation. And he he's, he's never short winded. Um, so here's what Nick had to say about that. But you said real love isn't possible in that environment, but real feelings are. Sometimes they turn into love and sometimes they just get confused with love because of the general excitement level. But in the moment, it's real. And I feel like that was one of the better takes I've ever heard of trying to explain that the show is quote unquote real, but it's also not at the same time. And the feelings love. And I just, I liked that, that line. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And again, that's not to take anything away from like the show, but, and, and that's just my interpretation of love. Um, at, you know, as I see it, having experienced, you know, various feelings, um, throughout my life, but yes, um, you know, to me, love is about that trust and that understanding where you are and not constantly worrying about how someone feels about you. And the whole show, the whole premise of The Bachelor is to like be kept in the dark yeah. uh, about how someone feels about you to the very end. And that that is not building trust and, and understanding. And there's so little we get to know about the people we end up in relationships. But truly, I, I felt real feelings. You know, uh, I'll never say that uh, I don't I would never take back what I said in any of those times because I, I'm in the moment I meant it and I felt it. I just realized after getting out of that world that that wasn't necessarily the type of love that I feel like I have in my relationship now or the type of love I desired in relationships when I was dating outside of The Bachelor. Uh, but again, the feelings are are real. And and um, and like I said, for you know, the Sean and Catherine's and the Ashley and Jared's. I mean, Ashley and Jared is different because they got the name. Ashley and Jared, stuff. they're amazing, but there's an asterisk. We saw a lot of crazy things go down between the yeah, two. Right. We're rewriting but, history a little bit on those Paradise episodes this week of the ideal situation. Granted, I know they wouldn't change it for the world and they're amazing and they have a kid and all's well that ends well, but like, we can't act like they left that show in a good place either time. <laughs> exactly. So, right. And so, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, they're very real feelings and it, ha it certainly has turned into love and healthy love. But on that show, it is the greatest leap of faith of all time based off of feelings that feel very exciting. Um, so, you know, I often say that two things can be true at the same time. You know, people have such a hard time believing it's real. Um, and I can't speak for everyone on that show and how they go about it, but, but, the people who are you know, getting down on one knee and saying, I love you at the end, I truly believe that the vast majority of those people are very genuine with what they're saying. They truly believe the words coming out of their mouth. They just might reflect back and, uh, and see how much they've come along in this relationship, especially if it works out, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, when Ashley was telling Jared, I love him on the beaches of paradise, I, I'm quite certain that means very different now uh, when Ashley and Jared, you know, say I love you to each other because there's a security and trust and this like there's truly my best friend. They're truly each other's ride or dies. They they know matter. They know no matter what that this person will have my back. And they didn't, ha they didn't have any of that on the beaches of paradise. It was right. just like any moment, that, you know, that love was based off of fear of losing something and, and hoping. And so. Uh, those are two very different things. And in, in, in my opinion, one's love and, and one is the hope or desire for love and the idea of it. And that's not quite the same. But I agree with everything you said. You know, of course, you're going to have these feelings, but is it a real love situation or you're just kind of in this bubble and things are definitely diff different once you leave? Yeah. And I liked the way he said it. I and mean, people, people love Nick, Nick's polarizing, right? People yeah. love him or hate him. But I thought this actually was really smart because you can admit that you had real feelings, but also look back and be like, okay, now that I know what it's like to really be in love, like I shouldn't have married that person. But I mm -hmm. don't like it when people totally just can just discount everything that they went through yes. on the show too. 
Totally. So it's a good old middle, little middle ground. Little middle ground. All right. Well, let's get into this week's episodes. Um, lots to get to. I can't believe Genevieve is taking up so much of my screen time as well. <laughs> She's the star. She really is. Who would have thought? I mean, the Justin and Aaron of it all with Genevieve. I I think that she's just suffering from the all she can think about is this and she's trying to really picture these relationships outside of outside and she's taking these, you know, a couple of hours she spent with them and saying this is what my life would be like. So the whole counting kisses and how Aaron makes her feel more loved, it I feel bad for Justin and I, I do think she's too. being a bit hypocritical mm-hmm. with her actions, but I also am just trying to remember like she's you know just in her head a little bit he is it well and that's what you have to remember about this environment like this is all you're doing all day long you're totally consumed by these relationships and things move really really quickly but yeah no I feel like Justin I hate to say it maybe dodged a bullet a little bit <laughs> I kind of think so too and listen like I don't know Aaron I've only spoken to him for like seven minutes total in my life um but I just don't know if he's that serious about Genevieve or if he's just excited that he seems to have a rose for oh, her. 100%. Yeah, because there's so many guys, so little girls, and he's definitely going to get a rose. Um, I mean, I think we knew this from Michelle's season, but Brandon is pretty much the perfect guy. Like, I literally was thinking about it because I was like, wait, he's from Michelle's season and we definitely were rooting for him. And I just remember us talking about how, and I think even asked Nate this, I was like, what is it like to be compared to someone who speaks like Shakespeare. Right. Like he, he had that like thing about him where it was like, he was like devastated. Everything was so high stakes. And it makes me wonder like, how was Brandon not like swooped up already? Like right. what and were we seeing? Because he's perfect. Right. And why wasn't he the bachelor too? I mean, like, Such a good question. like no brainer. Like he would have been a great season. He would have fallen in love with everybody. He would have been in love with everyone, but somehow I feel like he would have pulled it off where we would have been like rooting for everyone. And instead of being mad at him, we would have like, there's different ships would just be mad. Like I like him with this one. I like him in this one, which is, I feel like what the show used to be. Like you were rooting for a certain person to win, Mm -hmm. but not always mad at the lead for right. falling in love with all of them. And I feel like maybe he could have handled it or he would have just cried the whole time. But right. the queen is a lucky girl. Oh my God. Him just crying when she walked onto the beach and like- She wore being, a pretty dress. Yeah. Him being romantic, just getting her lunch. I'm like, this is too much for me. It's too good to be true. It's a, I'm a little nervous. It's like Marissa and Riley vibes where yeah. they were like so hot over heels and then like they broke up and there was kind of hints that like maybe it wasn't a healthy situation. Right. I hope not. And I really like Brandon. Don't come for me. I'm totally rooting for them. But- it feels like too good to be true. Way too good to be true. But I don't know. Something about it makes me, I, I feel like they may go all the way. I really do. I, I mean, I, I 100% on paradise. And I feel like afterwards, I think, I don't know, something about them. It just seems right. Yeah. I would say that over anyone else that I've seen oh, in a while. Totally. So. Totally. Um, something that didn't seem right was uh, Sierra and Michael A. You know, I felt, I, I, I did get what it, where he was coming from because like she was making a lot of, you know, having a lot of conversations about his son and, you know, about what kind of stepmother she would be and how it scared her. And I'm sure that kind of freaked him out a little bit. I mean, it was just a little bit uh, uh, too much too soon. I don't think anyone was wrong in this situation. I think that she was trying to kind of, which I know we'll get to in her social post in a second, Mm -hmm. was trying to be serious because it's a serious relationship. And I think that made him scared. But if she was not, you know, if she was being to one way, he would, it's either way, like you can't really win. Like I also just think he wasn't really feeling it that much with her. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if he just wasn't feeling it with her or cause if he meant everything he was saying, then maybe he needs like more time than to yeah. be dating on the beach. Cause mm-hmm. I don't know anyone, but I think maybe he was just saying all that stuff because he actually just wasn't that into her. Yeah. Right. No, totally. Um, but I'll be, I'll, I feel like he will make some sort of connection on the beach. I'm just curious to see who it's with. Yeah. And I can't imagine if he gets engaged, I would be shocked. I'd be shocked. Shocked. I feel like he would leave with somebody because you know, he wants to introduce his son to his significant other, but yeah, I, I would be really surprised. Um, someone that won't be leaving the beach with anybody, but her suitcase is Sally. <laughs> oh my God. Sally finally got here. And it was so interesting because with the, with the conversation with Jesse Palmer, like they did confirm some of that story there was three flights Mm -hmm. she did you know get to the airport and bail there was a bag I don't think that that was her bag that was delivered but a bag she she admitted was delivered there but in her Instagram comments you know people are like you locked a producer in a car for four hours and she's like it's a tv show and then someone was like you should sue ABC and she wrote I would if I could 
Oh, geez. Interesting. So, she also won't be promoting. Her and Teddy are probably taking similar strategies of not promoting the season. But yeah. um, what did you think of Genevieve and Shanae? Like, becoming their own version of Paradise Police and making Sally right. stay for about five minutes. That was, it was just wrong. It really was. I felt bad for Sally because, you know, she's trying to finally put herself out there. Who knows? I mean, like you said, what part of this story is true and what's fabricated, but she was finally putting herself out there. And I respect her for, you know, giving her ex a heads up who she works with and probably has to see on a daily basis. Right, like, what do they do? I, I think she was, a, I she was like, a, I looked her up, not what she, her last job title was previously engaged, but it also said, um, like cert like robot surgeon technician or something so i think she worked in a hospital okay. so i wonder if he was a doctor right so she might have to run into him every now and then so she just gave him a heads up i think that they just blew this way too out of portion and they were threatened by sally that maybe that she would take their men um mm -hmm. and that's what i felt like but it's so interesting to me that genevieve hated shanae on um clayton season and was like oh she's the biggest bully around meanwhile now you're a big bully. I don't get it. I really don't understand it. I know. Talk about people who are like, think they are not for the wrong reason necessarily, but what's the difference between right. anyone and who gets to be like the, listen, do I think Sally's probably still hung up on her ex? Probably. probably yeah. um, but I also think that's for Sally to maybe decide. And it's not like it's a secret. Like they can bring it up and be like, whatever. It didn't have to go that way where she was there for five minutes and they're talking about her and calling her over and where she didn't even feel comfortable enough where she could stay. I think that, it would have been fair game. Everyone was whispering about it. Everybody knew the story. So it's not like anyone there who walked in didn't know Sally had an ex-fiance who she allegedly has seen in the last couple months. You know, she's also seen Justin and she was making out with him. So it's not like she's married. Right. Like, really no. It's a fluid situation. So we don't right. know what's going on. So why don't we ask Sally instead of attack Sally? Seriously. And I don't blame her for leaving. I would too. Um, I'm going to miss her. I did enjoy I I hated it, but I also enjoyed it. Totally. Um, somebody that should leave the beach immediately is Pizza Peter. Um, I forgot about him. I do I? I feel like do a double, double take. I'm like, why do I know him? Yeah, and man. It, that was really uncomfortable. You know, the whole date with Brittany, she shut down the kiss and then he's turned it around to saying that she just wanted followers. Um, I don't think she's getting your followers from pizza Peter, but, um, uh, very I love fun. Brittany. I do too. She never was. Well, she has not gotten nearly enough screen time. Justice for Brittany. Um, I'm happy that she's still here. And I, this random connection with Andrew yeah. was a lovely surprise to come out of that awkward date and the ridiculous claims. I'm sure Peter will get sent home at this rose ceremony. We don't have to worry about him if they ever have one. Um, but I'm kind of shipping Brittany and Andrew. I totally am. <laughs> this whole Kira returning, leaving with Romeo. I, I, I do give it up to producers and editors for like just acknowledging acknowledging the awkwardness in that situation and just the fear in Romeo's eyes. <laughs> Romeo was like, if I leave with you, does that mean like I get to go to the reunion? Like he was like, let me think here. Like how much more screen time will I get? It, he was okay. calculating literally the math of how many more roses are there? Is there any chance someone's going to give me one? He has no interest in Kira. I don't believe. Um, and Kira, like part of me is like, good for you, girl. Like I'm sure the producers asked you to do this and you're just stirring the pot and getting your check. And another part of me is like, Really, the come for Jacob, and he just came back from freaking Jill. Like, it's too much. It's way too much. Like, we can see right through it. Like, we know yeah. that this is all producer manipulation. Like, she did not want to go back. She doesn't give a flying F about Jacob. She just wanted to, not. Right. They just wanted to stir the drama with Jill again. But it's like, no, we can see through it. You don't have to manipulate these situations all the time. Like, just let things happen organically. And they just sold us on Jill and Jacob as this like right. weird duo that we're supposed to get behind. And now like they almost took it away from us. Like I, I just, yeah, the, 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 the ingredients are there. They only need to do so much. They're doing too much. The producers yeah. are doing too much. Mm -hmm. Way too much. Just take it back a little bit. Um, all right, well, let's move on to our social spotlight. And mine went to, um, uh, Sierra who posted this TikTok after she left the beach and, you know, was a little confused about why Michael A just wanted to be friends. I love it. I, I, I think she, I feel like she's handling this really well. She had like also a long statement and was like, I was confused. It was a lot, but like, I respect him. Like she 
feels like she's just like a great girl. I'm probably looking back. She's probably like, oh, maybe there were signs. He just like wasn't that into me, but like, it's hard to tell. Um, and I like Michael A, but I don't know. I Something about it. I feel like he was trying to come off as the good guy. And it might not look great if he does fall for someone really quickly soon, because he kind of just told her he wasn't ready. Like the, his, his speech to me was like, he shouldn't be there. Right. No, totally. I agree with you. So that should be interesting. Uh, what was your social spotlight of the week? Oh, this is a um, shout out to my girl, Bachelor Data on Instagram, Susanna, who Tino's dad called a nerd, but she's the nerd we need in this world. And she's laughing about it. So that's why I can bring it up. But um, she did what we all needed to know, which was how much time has been spent on Ashley and Jared and the boom, boom room and their marriage and all the stuff we don't care about. And in addition to the fact that 16 minutes and 30 seconds of that episode on Tuesday was dedicated to them, they have the third most, the second most amount of screen time for the entire season. That's insane. There have been five episodes for season eight and Genevieve has over 30 minutes by the most by far. Ashley and Jared come in second at over 20 minutes. Then the rest all uh, fall under 20 minutes. This is over five episodes to then Michael, Justin, Jill, or maybe over the first four, I guess. Yeah, four, because we watched right. the first four episodes. Um, so then there'll be more tonight after, or more on Tuesday after that episode airs. So this is kind of delayed. You know what I mean? After the first four episodes, right. Genevieve, 30 minutes, Ashley and Jared, 20 minutes, Michael, Just, Justin, Jill, Shanae, Serene, Romeo, all round out, but they're in between like the 10, 20 marks. How insane is that? That's insane. Like, I did not need to see, I love Ashley and Jared. I think they're a great couple, beautiful baby. You're already married. We don't need right. to see you having like your little, you know, baby moon, whatever you call it, the, you know, time away from your kid. Like, it's just not necessary. And we could have, you know, we don't need 13, 16 episodes then if you're like scrambling to fill content. Like, why? It makes no sense. And also, like, they didn't even tell the story right. Like, everything that you're talking about, J- Jared and Ashley, it's not even like all what happened. Yeah. Like, we're acting like these kids don't know the story, but then they're leaving out key things. So it's like, either do it or don't do it. One. Two, like, the... F- it's it's just crazy. Like, looking at this data, which I'm sure we can use this graphic if they want to post it, like... It just doesn't make any sense. And the fact that like the crabs and the animals are the last two, but like someone like a Brittany who we're now getting to, it just, it makes no sense. She's like the fourth one down and think about how much we actually did finally see her in the fourth episode. And then if you look at the numbers, like the Ashley and Jared of it all, it really makes no sense. And I don't know who, and I don't even blame them because I'm sure they got paid. Right. Like, oh, of course they got paid. A, I'm sure a pretty penny to come. Like this is not on them. This is producers. This is like what they they felt was the most interesting part of that episode, which it just baffles me. It baffles me. And like also like we love Ashley and Jared. Like I don't need to see their real life marriage stuff. Like let's keep glamorizing like how great it is. Or I don't know, go on their YouTube or go on their Instagram or listen to their podcast. There's a thousand ways to get Ashley and Jared content, and I know there is a place for that. And I love talking to them myself. But this is just not why I watch this show. No, definitely not. Well, I don't think that they're going to be around much longer, but we'll have to Well, she wait. did comment. She was like, don't worry, my last episode is Monday. So we're not even okay. saying goodbye to them until next week. Next week. Oh, my God. Um, all right. Well, Sarah, who's on the podcast this week? Um, I'm breaking it all down with Zachary Reality, who has some, um, you know, who has his own little behind the scenes stuff and more from my Blake, my, my double date with the Blakes. Love it so much. All right. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Here for the Right Reasons. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.